Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're going to upgrade this old HST. This was made in the 1980s and don't worry dad, it's not your one. This is one I picked up cheap off eBay. This came as a set of two power cars and a coach and it cost £30. I know Hornby have just retooled their HST but I thought they're pretty expensive so I'd rather just upgrade one of these old ones. So there are going to be three things I'm going to do to this. Firstly, I'm going to replace the old ring filled motor with a brand new can motor. Secondly, I'm going to install a decoder socket so we can run this on digital. And finally, I'm going to upgrade the old bulb lighting in here to be directional LED lighting. I would like this to be able to pull a full rake of Mark III coaches and I'm a bit concerned that that might overwhelm the can motor. So what I'm going to do is put a motor in the dummy car as well and also upgrade the lighting in there to LEDs and install a decoder socket. So apologies in advance for my questionable soldering abilities, but let's get started. And here are the models, and they're not in bad condition, but I did try running this on analog when I first got it a couple of months ago, and it really wasn't very smooth. It jumped into life, there's no slow speed control, and as with a lot of these old ring fields, it gives off a horrible smell. I would show you, but I can't, because when I was looking at this motor back then, I took the brushes and springs out and didn't bother replacing them because I'd already decided to swap this for a can motor. This is the CAN motor kit I'm going to use and it comes from strathpepperjunction.com and it costs £15.50. It's got everything you need included a 3D printed mount for the new CAN motor to hold it in place. I've actually used one of these Strathpepper kits before on my Lima LMS diesel shunter and I was really impressed with it so I thought I'd give it a go again. They do different kits for different models and they offer different motor voltages. Ideally I'd have liked a 12 volt version but they'd sold out so this is the 6 volt version which I'm hoping will be okay. However running this with a full rake behind it might be a bit of a stretch so I'm thinking I might put another motor in the rear driving trailer as well. Um, so we'd have two motors essentially working as a consist and I'm going to have to put a decoder socket in there anyway to control the light so I may as well put in a motor. Then I've got an 8 pin decoder harness that will connect between the pickups and the motor to allow a decoder to be fitted and that will also give us function outputs for the lights. You can pick these up dead cheap on eBay. For the lighting I did look into doing this myself, I bought some dual colour red white LEDs and built a test circuit which I got working and I was about to solder the components onto a board when I discovered these from Black Cat Technology. Each board costs around £6 and all the components are neatly arranged on there and it's generally far superior than anything I could make so for the sake of £6 I thought I'd use that instead. You've got the option of warm white or bright white LEDs for the front headlights um, depending on whether you're modelling a new or an older style of locomotive and it comes with red LEDs for the rear. So let's start taking this apart. So normally the easiest thing to do is to pop the bogies out by sliding a screwdriver up and releasing the little catch that holds them in place. However, as you'll see, the motor bogey on this model was stuck for some reason, so I ended up having to take the body off around it. This is how easily it should have come out. And then you simply unplug the spade connectors to disconnect it from the wiring. To remove the body there are two clips on either side and one clip at the back and again you'll need to use a small flathead screwdriver or a little bit of plastic card or even an old credit card or something just to slide between there and ease the body away from the clips and once you've got those it should just lift away. Once you've got the bodywork off you can start dismantling the ring filled motor to install the can motor. As you can see my ring filled started to dismantle itself in the process. The first thing to do is to remove it from the frame. And you can do this by sliding in a flathead screwdriver and gently levering it out. Then you need to remove the retaining clip, remove all the gears and make sure you keep those safe because you're going to need them again. Then you can remove the faceplate and the wheels. I've removed the springs and the carbon brushes from my motor already but if yours has got them just be careful because those springs can go flying. To remove the armature you'll first need to remove the small brass gear. I did actually buy a pinion puller because I knew I was going to need to do this but the pinion puller was rubbish so I gave up and ended up using a flathead screwdriver instead. And do try to be careful whilst doing this because it's very easy to damage that brass gear. It's not a disaster if you damage the gear, the CAN motor pack does actually come with two replacements and I'm going to use one of those anyway. Then you'll need to remove the magnet and you'll probably need a pair of pliers to do this because sometimes it can put up a bit of a fight. The final piece to remove is the circular brass component that held the armature in position. 
This one came out really easily when pushed from the inside with the screwdriver. Others might require a bit more force and the use of a hammer. And now it's time to install the can motor. This isn't going to be a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to install the can motor because the guy who developed this kit at Strathpepper Junction has already got one of those and it's really good. He's also got a comprehensive PDF instruction booklet to go along with it. So if you want to see how it's done properly, then head over there and I'll put the link in the description. But here's a quick overview of the key steps. The kit comes with a circular sticker that goes between the case and the front of the motor to stop it making any electrical contact. So that's the first thing we need to put in. You can see from the video that I did this before I remembered to knock the circular brass piece out, but it didn't seem to make much difference. Next we can insert the new 3D printed mount for the CAN motor. This just slides in. The kit does come with a couple of retaining clips, but I've found these aren't necessary because it's quite a tight fit and stays in place on its own. Then we can insert the CAN motor, thread the two wires through the hole at the top, and then just push the motor in. It should be quite a tight fit. If it isn't, then you'll need to wrap a bit of tape around the outside of the motor to make it a bit thicker. Slide it in halfway at this stage, then use the retaining clip that goes onto the back to push it in the rest of the way. Again, it should be quite a tight fit. The good thing about these kits is there's no glue or anything permanent involved. If you wanted to take it all apart and reinstate the ring field motor, you could do. Once the motor's in position, you can slide on the small central gear. You could use the original brass one, but I'm using one of the new ones that came in the kit. These actually have 10 teeth rather than 11 on the original brass one. Later on when I went to test this motor I realised I needed to push this gear in slightly further than I'd done at this stage because it was sticking out and catching on part of the frame. Check everything spins smoothly and then you're ready to reassemble the rest of the motor. And let's quickly test everything works by hooking it up to an analogue supply. OK, that's working nicely, let's move on to installing the lighting. On the 8-pin decoder harness, you'll have 8 different coloured wires coming off the bottom of it. Red and black are the wires that connect to the pickups, orange and grey connect to the motor, and then we've got a blue wire, which is a common positive voltage, a white wire, which is for the headlights, a yellow wire for the rear lights, and a green wire for an auxiliary function, so that could be a cab light, for example. As I said at the start, and as you can see in this video, I did start working on my own lighting circuit using dual coloured red white LEDs, resistors, and I was starting to look at adding in some diodes when I discovered the Black Cat technology boards. For £6 each they saved me so much time and effort and they're a lot neater, so whilst I enjoyed playing with electronics this was a no brainer. You need to solder the white wire for the forward lights to the B pad, the common positive to the C pad, and then the yellow wire for the rear lights to the A pad. When I come to do this on the rear power car, I'll need to swap the yellow and white wires around so that when one is showing the headlights, the other is showing the rear red tail lights. The wires on the decoder harness were really long, too long for the distance between the front of the power car and where the decoder is located in the middle. I forgot to trim the wires on the first power car, so ended up with lots of surplus wire to hide. In the second power car, I cut them to the right length before soldering, which makes everything a lot neater. That's the lights wired up, and we'll come back to fitting them later after we've connected up the rest of the wires on the decoder harness. To get the power from the rails, we need to use the red and black wires on the decoder harness. I wanted to keep the spade connections to the bogies for the pickups, and I tried to remove them from the wires so that I could reuse them, but they weren't coming off the original wires very easily. So I decided to leave them in place on the older wire and just solder the new harness wires to the older wires and then protect them with a piece of shrink wrap. This turned out to be a mistake because firstly the old wires proved to be faulty so it had to be replaced and I ended up with really long wires which were untidy. When I did this again on the second power car I stripped as much of the old wire back to the connector as possible and then soldered the harness wire directly onto the spade connector. I also cut the harness wire to the length required for each bogey. Finally, the orange and grey wires are soldered to the wires on the motor. On the first power car, I connected the harness wires to the motor wires, again protecting the connection with shrink wrap. However, again, this left me with really long wires. When I did this again for the second power car, I desoldered and removed the orange and grey wires from the decoder harness completely and connected the motor directly to the decoder socket, greatly reducing the amount of unnecessary wire. Also, on the second power car, I swapped the connections around so that the motor would run in the opposite direction. Then it's a case of putting everything back together in the frame, sliding the spade connectors onto the bogies and securing the lighting. The lighting boards are designed for the Hornby HST, so fit perfectly in the space left behind when you remove the original bulb. And I just held it in place with a piece of black tack. 
I should just also mention that these black cat boards can be used with analog or digital systems and the instructions are really good. As I've mentioned, I had far too much wire left over, so tried to tidy that up with some tape to make sure it didn't foul the bogies. Fortunately, there's quite a bit of space in these HSTs. I plugged the Batman decoder into the socket and gave the motor a little test. You will almost certainly have to change some of the decoder settings to get good performance from these CAN motors. I had to reduce the max speed in the speed table to around 100, I changed the acceleration and deceleration settings, and I had to modify the back EMF settings. So using a decoder that allows for more adjustments is better. Next I tested the lighting. This is turned on and off with function 0 and as expected it changes from warm white headlights going forward to red tail lights when in reverse. And this is what it looks like with the body back on. Here's a photo of my second attempt with the other power car and hopefully you can see that it's much neater with far less wiring. I've used an identical decoder which has been set up in the same way and they're on the same address so hopefully both power cars should give similar output and work well together as a consist. So there we go, an old 80s model brought into the digital era with new LED lighting and a new CAN motor. And I think it's fair to say that my second attempt on the dummy car was a lot more successful than my first attempt, a lot neater with less wires. I'll drop links to the Black Cat LED boards and the Strathpepper Junction CAN motor conversion kit in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notifications button so YouTube will let you know when the next video comes out. I'll leave you with some shots of the newly upgraded HST running around Little Wicket. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.